What practical advice can you offer women looking to um, enhance their wardrobe without breaking the bank? Number one, confidence. Mm. It's free. It's confidence is free. <laughs>
the <laughs> cost of things are going yeah, up. So because the cost of things are going up, the prices are They're going up. Going Even up. Prada, like Prada, Miu Miu. I used to work for the Prada group. Um, like the prices have... It's, oh, it's night and day. From what I've seen, just on the market, I mean, they're getting price increases left and right. Even Fendi. <sighs> Fendi used to be our reasonable. <laughs> so those who know, I used to work at Fendi. That's actually how how we met. Yes, so yeah. Monica was at Miu Miu. I was at Fendi, and our stores were right next. Yeah, we were to neighbors. Each other. We were neighbors, <laughs> and I want to say back then, because I was there during the Carl Lagerfeld yeah, years. Yeah. So right when. Remember Carl? He took everything logo off the floor. Yeah. And it was nothing but monster collection. Yes, the monster stuff. And oh, I loved it so. Kind of now, I'm kind of happy it I didn't fun. buy anything. But it was fun. It was whimsical. But that was literally what we had to sell. Yeah. But make a long story short, that price point. I want to say the peekaboo, the large peekaboo back then might have been thirty nine fifty. Yeah. And that was a large one. That was a large. You can't even get a large. Anything for thirty nine fifty in any brand. I was going to sell some of my peekaboos because I had, you know, it started with you, I know, and then you I introduced know. me to Derek, and then Derek just got me hooked. So I had, I have quite a few peekaboos. So I was telling Layla, Layla came over, and I was like, I, I think I'm going to sell some of my peekaboos. Like, no, like no, she was like, them. no, do keep not them. sell any of them. The prices have skyrocketed on all of them. Don't sell any. Even of them. on Fashion File. Because I love Fashion Foul. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that later. Okay. Love fa Fashion Foul. I want to say the peekaboo now. I mean, back in the day, mm -hmm. you can get a peekaboo for $1,000, mm -hmm. $500. Mm -hmm. Fashion Foul, $3,000. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm not selling my... No. It holds its value. Oh, I love that. Because I do love all of my peekaboos. And I've been carrying my East West a lot lately. And everybody's like, where did you get that from? Because they don't sell it anymore. They don't. They're like, where did you get that from? And I'm like, uh, don't look at my bag. I ain't, I ain't selling it. See? Keep it. Yeah. Keep and it. I think that was the one I was considering. Now, in hindsight, it's my go-to everyday black bag. So, like, I wore it today with today's outfit. Mm. Yeah, so that's a good one. I mean, it is a good one. Okay. I love it. All right. Okay. So, that was kind of question number one. <laughs> <laughs> I know we went on for a bit. And, sorry, let me just apologize in a, in a second. But, like I said, when it gets juicy, you'll appreciate it. But we like to talk, so it'll it'll go on. But number question number two, can you describe your signature style and how has it evolved over the years? What elements do you think are essential for a powerful, chic look? <sighs> well, for me, I think it's different. Mm -hmm. There's not a word that I can, like, there's not a a concept that I say for me, like people will say, oh, I'm boho chic, I'm this, I'm that. I'm not that yeah. person. For me, I like to be polished. Mm. So my style is super clean. Mm -hmm. It's always, it makes sense. Yeah. It's never doing too little, never doing too mm. much. Yes. The shoe will always be perfect, mm -hmm. everything. And I'm also a Virgo. Yeah. So I'm very particular on the things that I wear, the things that I buy. Mm -hmm. um, I. I know what works for me. Mm -hmm. I know what doesn't work. Like, I don't wear hats. Mm. I don't wear shades either. That's true. Why it don't just, you wear shades? It just doesn't work for me. Ah. I only own one pair, and they, they're they just sitting in the closet. I don't are even they, own Are they good? Hat. Should I steal them? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're Tom Ford. I was going to say, because I know you. I yeah, know they're going to be fire. Tom, but I don't even wear them. <laughs> um, I have a hat. Maybe I don't even know. like I just don't it's just it doesn't work for me, yeah. but I know what works for me mm. I so I'm polished. Mm. I want everything. I, like I mean, and I'm really big on tailoring as well yes. So I live at the tailor all of my things. I mean pants always will always be fit because you're so slim and you're so You know, you're like model I'm slim. I'm long yeah. everything like my limbs are long so I know like, I just bought a pair of jeans, which was like a fourth, because I really didn't do jeans back in the day. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to get into denim. And I'm like... I love it. I'm like, I'm trying to accommodate I'm trying. denim in my wardrobe. I'm <laughs> trying to add denim into my wardrobe. And now that I have it, like, the fit is a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely, like, I'm at the tailor. Mm -hmm. um, my style has changed over time. Back in the day, I used to wear a lot of suiting. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot That's of men's true. suiting. But yeah. it was also because of work. Yeah. I used to work at a lot of conservative brands. Yeah. St. John. Yes. Uh, David yes, Yerman. Yes. And it required suits. Yeah. So, my thing is, like, I mean, I had a closet full of suits. Mm. What did you, you do with it. them? You still have them, right? Most of them I do. Okay. Some of them... You give away. I got rid of. Okay. I sold, sold, sold them because the thing is, the world we're not dressing up anymore. I know, and I don't like that. I know. That's why, honey. I'm. You know. You know me. I'm gonna create my own lane. 
We have to. We have to. We have to, but we're not dressing up anymore. And I found that these suits were sitting here for years and years and years. Um, and like I said, over time, some of these brands, they stopped their suiting assortment got smaller. Mm. The buys got smaller. So we just stopped buying it, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I just didn't see the need for it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now I'll do like a nice jacket yeah. out. This I jacket, can we have a moment for his jacket? Right as it came, I'm like, ooh, the jacket. Okay, tell the people, what, the, what is the jacket? It's Maximilian. I for, love it. for those who don't know, he is the head creative director at Ferragamo. He's doing big things. Yes, he is. Like, Ferragamo's like having a resurgence. They are, and I really want people to give them the time of day. I they really do, want people to pay attention. And they, the quality, they don't know nothing about it. Yeah, and that's the thing. Well, because it's not, you know, I feel like they're trying to get on the influencer thing. Like, it's not all the rage. And that's why people are sitting on it. Because they're priced well. Very well. And the quality of Ferragamo is bar none. You know, and this is not a new thing for them. They've always had that quality. But the issue is that, because you know I'm in the industry, mm -hmm. they do not have a bag or a shoe yes. oh, that yes. is recognizable or that's yes. going to grasp yes. and get the people in there yet. Yes. Once yes. they get that item, yes. then the people will buy the shoe, they'll buy by the bag, and then they'll say, okay, well, let me look at the ready-to-wear. That part. And that's I think, how it's done. I, yeah, and that's the thing. I feel like a lot of people don't understand. This is why I felt like it's so necessary to have these conversations. People don't understand how trends start. They don't just fall from the heavens. It's, it starts with the accessories. Absolutely. So a brand is usually identified by its accessories, right? And once they take off with those accessories, everything else falls into place. And I feel like they're taking the steps to try and get there. They're just not there yet. They had some like longer bag with a funny handle that I saw a few yeah. girls buying, but I'm like, you know, and I, I had to have a come to Jesus moment with myself. I'm like, would I buy this bag if a few other girls weren't buying it? No. No. It, no, it's just I've never really been. I've had some Ferragamo accessories here and there that I've gotten rid of after, over the years, but I've never been a strong Ferragamo person. I think I would rather buy Ferragamo clothing. And then I love Ferragamo men's. Oh my gosh, he yeah. hits it off the Ferragamo park men's every I, time. My husband, I want him to wear Ferragamo men's all day, <laughs> every day. All day, every day. He hits it off the park every time. And yeah. the thing is, he took a lot of elements from his personal collection mm, and brought it over. That's what it is. And, I mean, I'm a big fan of Maximilian. I mean, he can literally take my whole paycheck. I do not care. <laughs> I love it. But, I mean, they're missing the accessories. The accessories are nice, but they haven't hit it yet. Yeah, they haven't hit yet. They're going to get there. Yeah. I'm like, if the Rogue can hit it, well, and I don't understand why they're hitting it. I've been it. trying to figure that brand, honey, brand out. Honey, I'm like, I feel like the people who are like in the industry that understand fashion and design and everything and what goes into it, you look at the row and you're like, why? I I don't, I think the quality is there. I think the quality is there, but the quality is there for other brands that are not getting this kind of recognition. To me, people that wear the row are people that want to rebel against everything else. Mm. They, To me, it's literally a statement that says, I don't want to do what you do. I'm mm -hmm. doing what I want to do, but I'm also doing, I'm actually wearing this to show you that I don't want to do what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what that is. That makes sense. That's literally yeah. what the role is yeah. because I get it. It's nice, but it's like, you can go to Target, Banana <laughs> Republic. <laughs> Banana like, Republic is literally the same I brand as the role. I swear to God. Okay, so I feel like we're already jumping into some of the trend and the, the brands to like avoid. Banana Republic is literally the role. I, I, legit. Like, 100, I 100% agree with you on it's that. It's the same thing. I 100% agree with you on that. And if you want that. that look, Banana Republic is in every mall. I, 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 sorry, I, I'm like, you guys, I'm sure you guys are like, why is she running down? <laughs> my laptop is on the floor so I can read the questions. <laughs> you know what? I'll probably just do that with my phone to make it easier. So I don't have to look down. <laughs> um, but yes, I 100%, 100% agree with you on that. Okay, so let's, I'm going to try and keep it in the order so my <laughs> editors are not like, dude, you're all over the place. Okay, items you wished you duped, what you're happy you didn't buy. I almost feel like, I feel like we, I, 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 should I go first? Or, go first, okay. go first and I'll chime we're, in. Since we were talking about the row, um, I know I didn't buy anything from the row, but I, that will definitely be the happy I didn't buy that new, that bag. I can't even remember the name of it. I'll have a picture pop up. I don't even up. know any of their names of bags, and I know the names of bags. Yeah, I don't know anything. It, well, there's one in particular that all the girls are, like, killing oh, it's them. It's large, right? Yes, 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 yes. 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 And How it much looks is like that? A, it, it's, like, five. Like Hell five. no. Exactly. Exactly. Hell no. And, you know, and I, it's, and they're, they're coining it to be the next, um, Birkin. Please. And I'm, like... 
And I want people to stop saying that. The next right? Birkin. There will never be an, the there Birkin is never, the Birkin. Exactly. The, the Birkin is the Birkin, and there will never be another Birkin. There's never going to be another yeah. bag. There are bags that are close. Yes. There are bags that are similar. There's bags mm -hmm. that look like it. There mm -hmm. are bags that if you can't afford the Birkin, you get. Mm -hmm. I.e. Like the Saint Laurent Sac de Jour we love. <laughs> oh, I hate that bag. <laughs> you know I love I it. Yeah, you know. But it's See, for is... somebody that who I feel like you want the large, you want the Birkin, you oh, wait, can't wait, sorry. afford. Sorry, I was thinking of the wrong bag. I love that bag. The Sac, Sac de Jour. Jour. We yeah, love sorry. That. My bad. I do love that. I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the I care. Sorry. <laughs> I care. I care. The big sack. Hate it. But we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sac de jour. It's a great bag. Mwah. It is. My sister I, My sister has the, the biggest size for you work. Can, you can't go wrong with that. A boss bag. That's because what she cares to work The thing is, day. people do have the Birkin money, but mm -hmm. nobody has the time to build up to buy it yeah if you know what i mean yeah yeah because you because know, you're not going to walk in and just get the bag you unless have to... unless you're super lucky like karen yeah but my, my friend karen richick she she got her first one just by fluke but that is very rare was like, she overseas no she was in new york <sighs> yeah i know like just walk in just walked in like and and she knows like but she's gotten so many other ones in paris especially yeah. when but she knows like that was a fluke i remember watching her video on that and I, i'm like damn like lucky you I mean, I know overseas you walk in, you can yeah, ask you can for an appointment, appointment yeah. and just see. Yeah. But nine times in ten, they're not going to offer you a Birkin. It'll yeah, be especially not else. here. And funny enough, my, do you know Tomiko? I know of him. him. Yeah, so he loves Karen. <laughs> he loves her. He's like, yes, yeah, so if she's in town, just have her come out and get her a bag. <laughs> he got my bag, but I also paced myself. And, you know, they were like, they told me, like, they were like, you know, you don't have to do the song and dance. We like you. Yeah. I always say if you're kind to people, it goes, it goes, a, it goes a long way. I didn't buy a, a shitload of stuff. I did buy stuff, but you yeah. know what I did? When all my Nigerian posse would come in, because you know they have money to spend like water. Bring them on in. I bring them all. I would bring them all to him. So all my friends, and I, you know, and I'm, I, I like to be loyal. Once Let I me have give one you a person, little insider from what I've been told. Ooh, tell me, tell me. A lot of them, they actually don't even have the power to give out the bag. They actually basically have to put you up to the store manager, the assistant manager, and say, okay, this is Monica. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. And she is this. This is her profile. This mm. is what she's capable of. This is what she does. Mm. And then another associate will say, okay, this is Breon. This mm. is him. He does this. Da, 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 da. And then the store manager will pick. Really who's basically interesting. Worried. That's what I heard. I can't confirm, can't deny, but that's what I heard. When I was picking up mine, one of them, um, she, um, she's a friend now, but she was a follower. I, that was she introduced herself to me that she was, and then Nigerian girl, she's a doctor. She's been collecting, so she has a great relationship. Mm. And then there was another lady, another black lady, a lawyer. She was picking up in Himalayan. Mm. I know. I was just like, yeah. And you, you know, know what? And all these other brands have. Himalayan bags, but I'm like, if you're going to do it, just do the Birkin. You got to do the Birkin. You got to do the Birkin. Yeah, if you're going to spend 100K on a bag. You might as well do the Birkin. Uh, that's the only way to do it. That's the only way, because I'm like, why would I, you know, no shade to Fendi or anybody else. Why? Yeah. I wouldn't. I'm not even an exotics person, though. Neither am I. I just can't, I can't wrap my head around spending, because most exotics will start about like 30, 30, 20, some 20,000, 20 to Even 50. the minis. Even, even the, the minis. minis, yeah. And I'm just like, no matter how much money I have, I just don't see the purpose of spending that much money on 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 a bag. It's just, and it's just not for me. And the people who have them, I love seeing them. I love selling them. <laughs> Shoot, I, that commission on a you know twenty. My first day at Fendi, I sold a Croc. Are you serious? My first day at Fendi, I will never forget. I sold sold a Croc, and it was a client, a previous client before. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know her. Uh, uh, remember Leslie? I do. Yes. She came in and bought a crock for my first day. It was oh, my wow. first sale. Wow. $30,000. Oh, that's nice. That's always great, especially when you're getting into it yeah. and getting into retail. Because it, be, it can be hard, but at the same time, it's, it can be so rewarding because not only do you have access to all, this beautiful, all these beautiful pieces, but you really get to meet so many interesting people. It, absolutely. First of all, it takes time. Mm. People think that you know they walk into luxury, they see these pe people in there and that they're just out here just making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. They're doing this and mm. doing that. And sometimes they are. Yes. But it's it takes time. It's all about that client book. Yes. It's really relationship building. Yes. It's 
people liking you. Yeah. It's people identifying with you. It's people mm -hmm. wanting to shop with you and yeah. spend their money because I've noticed that in the luxury sector, people do not shop brands, they shop people. Yes, 100%. And if you have a good person that you just know, like this lady knows me, this guy knows me, he knows me in and out, he could literally work at Walmart. Yeah. You're going to come and he's and he, he can sell you anything and yeah. you're going to buy yeah. it. Because there's that trust, right? I almost see that to an extent with social media because, you know, when you bring all, when you take it all apart, it's, it's marketing, you know, we're, we're selling things that we love to our audiences and it, it requires trust because we were having this conversation about the girls who, who say they're experts but have no experience with it whatsoever when it comes to fashion or selling or design. Or and we're that. using that word expert a little bit too much because are we really an expert? That part. To me, unless if you work in the industry, you've literally seen garment making, you know the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. Or you can make garments on your or own. Or you can make garments on your own. Or if you sold the garment, mm -hmm. I don't consider you an expert. What they really are, are taste, they're, they have great taste. Yes, I agree on the great taste. Tastemakers, they, they, I mean, they literally know what's hot, what's not. Mm -hmm. They know what's moving and mm -hmm. this, that, and the third. It's just taste. Yes. And, and, not, not, and there's nothing no wrong with that. And there's, exactly, there's nothing wrong with that because what would the world be without tastemakers, right? Absolutely, because we need them. Exactly, we do need them because not everyone will, I think a lot of people will always look at a, um, a personal shopper as someone who's just trying to push, con you know, just trying to make a sale, even though they are an expert and they're giving you the best advice, but a tastemaker, they'll be like, okay, yeah, this person, you know, even though sometimes they don't know what they have to talk about. One of my about, but. favorite tastemakers, actually, he's not a tastemaker. I would actually call him an expert, uh. Kamari. Come on, oh, Kamari's, oh, Kamari's an expert. He's an Kamari's expert. an expert. He's in New York now, right? He's in New York. Yeah. Kamari, He's shout out to Kamari. Yeah, Kamari shout out to Kamari, because he does, he does follow my, he, I don't know if he follows YouTube, but he follows, um, Kamari is a Instagram. personal shopper at Saks. He's yes, in the in New York, yeah. Fifth Avenue Club in yeah. New York. The only black man, I think. Wow. The only black He's man. He's come a long and way. And the youngest black yes. man. But he's so driven, and he's but let such, me tell you something. he's so product-based. He's so product based, but Kamari was on to brands before mm, a lot of these mm. people. Kamari was wearing Bottega. He was in the Bottega boots. He was mm. in Bottega. I mean, he was doing certain things before Dan Daniel Lee was there. Mm. And I remember thinking Bottega, ugh, a boring brand. Ugh, a boring brand. <laughs> See, this is what I used to I used to Look I know, I know, I know. Look at you now. <laughs> but this is what I used to say. And this is what I say about Bottega all the time. Like, Bottega was for the girls who get, got it or the girls who knew, knew. So Bottega's like old money. Like that was old how we identified money. if you were a client worth, you, you know. Knew. You could look at somebody and go, oh, she's got she's some money. She's got Bottega, she's got money. She's got money. Yes, because you just did nobody was carrying it. This was it. before the hype, yes. but before all of that. Yeah. Nobody was carrying it. Yeah. But if you saw somebody with a Bottega bag. You gave them respect. You gave them respect and said, oh, she gets it. Yeah, oh, she yeah, knows. Yeah. One and of my girlfriends, like, she has a tw we'll take over 20 years old. She's like, girl, we've been doing that. You know, my Nigerian friends, like I said, my Nigerian friends, they, have, they, they got the money. She's like, oh, girl, we've been doing that. We've been, do we've been that. doing that. Did you see my post today about black girl luxury? Yes. Yeah. We've, we've been doing that. I think, I mean, the thing is, social media amplifies everything yes. and it puts everything on display. Black people have always been buying luxury no matter what. Black people have always been into their pieces yes. no matter yes. what. I mean, I remember, I mean, if you want to, break it down, the most popular, are you familiar with the Prada uh, America's Cup? No. It's, I mean, it's the IT Prada sneakerhead and has always been since mm -hmm. the 90s. Black men made that shoe happen. Oh, see, look at that. Mrs. Prada. Oh, wait, wait. Yes. Isn't that part of their sports collection? Yes. You know, I still have my boots. I still, have, they're over 20 years old. Keep them. Oh, honey. Do you still wear them? In immaculate condition. <laughs> I think I should bring them and show you. Do they have like the red stripe? They do. Keep them. Of course. I me sell them never. never 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 and i probably got them for 500 dollars <laughs> not less but i'm telling Canada you that day. shoe black people black men black women have yes, been wearing I remember that luxury since day one yeah, they i mean stop. they were in Friend or not y'all can claim it to in be the 90s trend. we had i mean they were rocking ralph lauren mm. polo mm. tommy hill figure yes. i mean and over time, I mean, it's elevated. Yes. Black people have been doing it, but it just so happens that now that we have social media, mm -hmm. we're seeing it. Yeah. Someone left a really good comment. She's like, we've been doing this before social media was a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, why is it like, like, 
I, I saw a post and they're like, oh, black girl luxury is dead. I'm like, what do you mean it's dead? Do, did I die? <laughs> that was kind of, I'm like, ah, shoot, no. I, last time I checked, I'm breathing the air. Yeah. How is it dead? And I'm not the only one. Because there's a lot of us, you know, like this is not, yes, we might not buy everything we see because, you know, the whole idea is you buy what speaks to you. Absolutely. You buy with taste. Because that's what it's about. You, you know, I feel, I feel like they took this whole movement or wherever they were doing on TikTok, because <laughs> I think it started on TikTok. They took it so far that you just had to consume, consume, consume. And that's not what luxury is no. about. It's about taste. It's about buying what speaks to you. It's about experiences. So it's not even just the, the tangible things that you can hold or accessories or bags or shoes or clothing, but it's a lifestyle. It's a mindset. Somebody was saying that, you know, she does a lot of luxury, but people, even when she's buying, when she wears cheap things, they question her, they ask her about it because the way she carries herself. Absolutely. I don't, and that's the issue. A lot of people think they have great style, they have great taste, they have great this because they buy a lot of luxury. Mm, oh, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> and I think luxury is everywhere. Yes. It's the trips that you take. Absolutely. It's the skincare that you use. Oh, honey, the skincare. The things that you put in your hair, that how part. you wash your hair. Mm -hmm. It's where you eat at. It's how you sleep in your bed. It's mm. the couch that you sleep on. Mm. It's the things that you watch. Mm. It's the consumption mm. of the TV shows that you watch, the books that you read. Mm. Because the thing is, luxury is everywhere. Yes. Not just in clothes, not just in fashion. You it's everywhere. You so if that. you're really that girl, that boy, and you're luxurious, it's all around. Yes. And people just think that, you know, if I buy this, I'm that. I'm buy this, I'm that. There's been so many times I've seen somebody dripped in designer and I still didn't see them. Of course. Oh, I 100%. And that's the sad part. Like, mm -hmm. I've seen them walk into the room and I'm like... And I look the other way, and I, mm -hmm. I, I don't even moved, recognize. You're not impressed. I'm you're not, not impressed nothing. or anything because yeah. you literally just bought a mannequin look. That part. Or you bought that because you saw a rapper... A, a, a celebrity in that. That's the only reason why you bought that. Yeah. You yeah. have no idea the background. I'm laughing because I'm like, you have no like... idea the background of this item. Yeah. Like, there's that you so spent much thousands of dollars on. history yeah. of product and like even like I don't know if you, like down like Fendi for mm -hmm. example. There's girls that I saw. She had like this Fendi outfit on, and it was this mesh logo situation and in my mind when she walked through the door I was looking at her and I was wondering I wonder if she knows that that logo that there that is on her shirt is the original Fendi logo mm. I wonder if she knows that the FF means fun furs oh I didn't even know that fun furs fun furs I had no idea yeah it's fun furs I like I just wonder I always am wondering when I look at people and what they buy do they know the history of what's going on mm. and to me I I personally try myself to only buy things that I know the background of. Mm. You know what? That's actually smart because that, that way I'll be saving my coins if I because do that. Because <laughs> it also lets you know, am I buying this because it's it, it's a trend, it's mm. popular, and you don't know shit about it? Yeah. Or are you buying it because you really love it and you, like, believe in the brand and yeah. it spoke to you? Yeah. So that's how I justify things. If I see myself about to buy something and I can't tell you nothing about it except for the fact that I like it, mm. I don't buy it. Interesting. I need to do that because God knows I ain't got no space for nothing no more. I legit just so this whole rack needs to go upstairs and the upstairs closet is full. My coat closet is full and I just did a massive like brought my friends over, sold my clothes for five dollars, ten dollars. Please just take it. Leave like to the point where, you know, they're like, oh, I like it, but I don't want to spend any more money because they spent. Yeah. I said, please just take it. <laughs> just yeah. take it out of my house. It's coming. To, yeah. Yeah. And there's another brand that I'm doing a full like outfit, like whatever for. So I've been getting like wardrobes of stuff and I'm just like, I need to come up with a way where I'm not just buying on impulse anymore. I also need to come up with a way where I'm really breaking it down. Like I've used my tactics that I used to use back in the day. So that way I wasn't buying everything yeah. in sight. But now I'm like, I still, I keep on getting these urges. Are you a cost per, per, per wear Per person? Uh, well, I am. I would say yes and no, but because I get so much clothing set my way on yeah. a regular, I feel like I don't necessarily get cost per wear on a lot of things, or I forget, or I'm always in this need that I feel like, oh my God, I need to buy more. And then, so, but lately I've really been trying to check myself that no, you don't need to buy more, especially because after I organized the whole space and my closets and mm -hmm. everything, I was like, okay, I don't need to buy more, but the accessories, I've been getting my cost per wear. Okay. So, like, my, wear it. 
Oh, honey, that Saint Laurent bag, I, I wear it to death. My Givenchy choke, like those are pieces that I wear over and over again. This new one, I will wear over and over again. I'll get every penny's worth. So that's always my goal. And I think that's why I've kind of had this nether come to Jesus moment with myself where try not to buy bags this year because I have almost every color I can think of and I'm not wet, willing or ready to get rid of any of them. Because I want, I feel like I still need to use them. So what items, well, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Items you wish you duped, what you're happy you didn't buy. So we kind of talked a little bit about the um, items we, we were happy we didn't buy. So now let's do items we wish we duped. Okay. Oh, I love Bottega. But <laughs> Bottega cassette bag. Oh, yeah. Oh, but honey. with the gold chain. Oh. Should have oh. been duped. Oh, yeah. The Amazon had, I saw some. Because where's it at? You're, <gasps> who's wearing it? You know what? I bought the cassette bag, not with the gold chain, but I bought the cassette bag. Good. But I returned it because, really? you know, well, you know, Bottega is about their leather yeah. and workmanship. When it came to me, it was so poorly done. I was, I was shocked. I was like legit when, shocked. When, when was this? Because remember, was, Daniel Lee comes, I know. success, yeah. and their whole yes. thing is and to hurry up and was. get this out. That's exactly when it was. So guys, if something comes to you and it looks like it could be slightly off and the workmanship is not on par, return it immediately. When I even took it back to the store, they were like, oh my God. Like, they didn't say nothing. They are like, oh. Oh, so they knew. Oh, yeah. The, stitch, the, st the, the leather, the stitches made um, indents in the leather. Exactly. Oh, yeah. To me, that is the major but indicator you, that something's not done properly. The funny thing is, I, and I hate to be this person, but sometimes you actually do have to buy things when they first come out. If yes. you love oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. when the hype, hypes it up mm. <laughs> and the brand C, they will rush yep. into production yep. and try and to hurry to up to pr produce as much as they can to make money. Yep. And now the quality is not the same. Yep. And now you buy the bag, you wear it for three, four months later, and then the screws fall out and all this. And then Chanel! now, <laughs> and then now you're literally in repair yep. and the brands are telling you it's going to be four to five months yes. for a repair. Yeah. Chanel. Really? Chanel, oh honey, this, that pink, um, um, the pink classic that I have over there, when I first of all got it, it was all twisted. My, my, my Chanel bag from, that I got in 20, was it um, 2007? Never twisted. Still? Ev never. Yeah. The gold, everything's better. Even my Chanel, my Chanel 19, which was what, in the last two, three years, my gold, the gold hardware, on because the gold hardware was gold, it's actually the gold yeah. that they used to do in back in the day. That one tarnished like within a few months. Tarnished within a few months. So 100% on that. That's why with most of my Fendi bags, I got them when they were dropping. So the Sunshine Tote, I got, you know, I, I can't say who it was for, but it was for one of the big wigs. Like, okay, you know, I know. Saxon I know exactly where we're going. It was for her. Yeah, wow, it was she... for her. But, um, you know, Derek was like, it's fair game. She didn't, she didn't pay for game. it. It's fair game. So I think he took it from Tisa. Oh, well. Yeah, and he sold it to me. And that's, you know, because people till today, they're like, oh, you know, what size is that? Where's I said, I don't know. I said, when I bought it, it was the only size. Yeah. You know, it was, they didn't have, they, it was through the success. Because you bought it when it first, it, when it first came, you've came out. You've had no issues, have you? No issues, but I am getting ready to sell it. I don't use it. What color is it? It's um the Cognac. Mm. Well, that's what they, they you launched don't use it with it that. For travel? No, because I have my book tote. And I'm, I'm so loyal to that Dior book tote. I just can't get over it. Like, I get it. It is the most, it's just sturdy. And I got it in Paris. Okay. It, and that, it takes a beating. Because, you know, I'm not, I, I. But we love bags like that. Exactly. Bags that you can beat up. Yes, and it still looks great. Yeah. Every time I, I get compliments. Every time. Well, I'll keep it. Yeah, okay. I get it. So you wish you duped that. I wish I duped, um, gosh. I'm actually going to say something that I own, which I actually wore recently in a photo shoot, but I do wish I duped it, or I wish I didn't buy them at all. The Versace platforms. Pink. No, I did it lilac. They're, they're here. <laughs> this pair. <sighs> Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I wish I duped these. How many times have you worn them? Not not enough. Yeah. I probably wore them once during Fashion Week, like outside of a hall. Did you buy them because of the hype? Of course. 100%. 100%. Not that they're bad on my feet. And the way I styled them, I styled them recently with an outfit um, for Black History Month. Um, and it looked great. But I legit 100% bought, bought it for the hype. Like mm -hmm. if all the girls weren't wearing it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care less. I couldn't care less. So that for me was definitely the one item that I wish I duped, um, that I wish, yeah, 100%. Just like those Loewe glasses, ooh. 
<laughs> you saw that video. Yeah. I bought three of those things. I mean, because they were so big yeah, at the time, yeah, and then yeah. where are they now? That's and now exactly. you can honestly get them on Essence for like 250 bucks. Oh, honey, you can get them on Amazon for 9.99. <laughs> 9.99 on Amazon. And, and nobody would know. Uh, no, of course not. Especially when I come correct with everything yeah. else. As I have one in, in the same blue as my Kelly. So you think when I'm rocking that Kelly and then my hair is covering the side so you don't see the Loewe logo or not, you think that you will think they'll, anyone will think it's not the real one? Of course they'll think it's the real Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Right. So, you know, be smart about what you shop, guys. And, of course, we're, we're going to do more of these items I wish I duped and what I'm happy I didn't buy. So There's stay tuned a lot. For that. Right? There's, there's, you want to add any more? or? I will say, I mean, and I don't, this is not an attack on Versace, <laughs> but they're silk shirts. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, that's a good one. I'm about to do another series. The Versace series like, silk oh, shirt. Yes, any of them? Yes. To me, any of them. They are great for Miami. I was gonna say <laughs> tropical location, San Tropez. You're on the beach yes. somewhere, but you're only wearing it on the beach. You're wearing it on the yacht. You're wearing it there. Yes. Why are you in Atlanta in the club with it on? Because <laughs> it's why Atlanta, you, baby. Why are you at dinner with it on? It bothers me. <laughs> And to be honest, Zara will do the same thing. Of course. And we love it's we love a good Zara. <laughs> and it should be duped. Because now, I mean, when those sh shirts first came out, they were eight ninety five. Now you go on Versace, they're like fifteen fifteen hundred. They don't love Maybe more mind. than that. Mm, 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 they should have been duped. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent on that. Let um let me see. What what colors do they do? Do they have yellow hearts? Yellow hearts <laughs> if you think Versace shirts should be should always be duped. Right. <laughs> okay, so question number four. What brands do you think are winning right now? What brands are worth every penny and worth um I'm sorry, what brands are worth every penny and those trying it? Okay. Hmm. Hands down, Loewe is having a moment. This is true. Shout out to J.W. Anderson, the creative director. Mm. Anything that that man touches is gold. Mm. It. I mean, I love his design. I love his eye. I love that it's different. He's taking mm. chances. He's probably he the only chance. person right. out there that is really, it's Scaparelli, yeah. that is doing something. Yeah, I agree. I mean, really doing something yeah. where it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. And in fairness to... Loewe price points are not terrible. Same thing with J.W. Anderson price points are on their own. But Loewe is beginning to go up. And you got to get it now. Yeah, they're beginning to go up. So that's why... The puzzle bag. I know. I, you know, I did end up selling my puzzle bag. It was bag. 1950. Now it's three... It's like third, third 33. Is it like... Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Oh, I sold my Shoot, I should have kept it and sold it now. Which color? I, um, Caramel. I would have kept that. And you know, I, I sold it to my audience, so you know I sold what it. What made you sell Church? it, though? Because you I wasn't using, using it. it. I wasn't using yeah. it. I wasn't using it. And then this is the thing. It is a, a, a unique bag. It is a unique bag, but that's not even the issue. I think because I had the Fendi first in the same color. When I have bags in the same color, yeah. it makes it, it's almost like, it just makes that getting ready process difficult. I'm like, oh, this one, should I do this one? Or should yeah. I do this? You know, and that. Technically, they're different bags. So now in hindsight, I'm like, why wasn't I wearing it? I don't know why, but I just, I know I wasn't wearing it enough for me to want to keep it. I was going to buy one end of last year. And then, because I have this thing, there's certain brands I'll buy brand new and certain brands I'll go straight to fashion file. Mm -hmm. And for that, I was going to fa fashion file. Mm -hmm. But they were, fashion file was selling at the, almost the exact same price as wow. in the store. That's in the store, thing. it was 33. Fashion file had it for like 27. Damn. Damn. <laughs> if it was 15, I'll buy it. Well, I, with no when problem. I bought mine, it was definitely in the thousands. I was just like, oh, this, oh, is, no. a great, this is a great price. Point. Not anymore. Wowzers, snowzers. Oh, my word. Not anymore. Okay. But okay. they're having a moment. Okay. Um, I don't know. Are you familiar with Amiri? I feel like I've seen the late, the logo. Yes. But I don't know if I've actually seen the actual. Um, um, product. I only go based off of what, what, what I see on the runway. Okay. The men's wear, mm -hmm. amazing. Okay. I think people need to pay attention to them. I think eventually, they're, if people can get off the Pharrell hype and actually look at stuff that it, that actually matters, mm -hmm. that's another still story for the mm -hmm. day. Okay. Um, Amiri, they're having a moment. Their Ready to Wear show was amazing. These pants are Amiri. Mm -hmm. The fabric looks amazing. And it's almost like there's silk in there. Well. Ooh, fit the well. And I love um, the raw, is that a raw edge? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Look how clean that is. Oh yeah. Amiri, I love. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're ones to watch. Mew Mew. 
<laughs> Mew, Mew Mew's having a big comeback and people kind of forgot or they just didn't know. And for some reason, people don't know that Mew Mew and Prada are the they same don't. company. It's the same thing. I always say Miss Prada, that's where she just goes. That's her name. That. Yeah. <laughs> That's where she just goes to just do nonsense and do whatever she, whatever, and it really is. That's really what Mew Mew is about. It's where she has fun with fashion and she does whatever she wants. I'm not a fan of those little boy shirts because I'm like, where are we going? Where are we going? Unless you are, even Taylor Swift, does she wear panties to go out? You know, Bella Hadid, like, but why are we wearing panties? the people are buying it. The people are buying it. Those mini hard. skirts, they're by buying it. But those mini skirts are not for black people now. Like, will that cover If you my have ass? a bum, it's not going to work. Yes, now. Like, that, it will, like, it will cover half of my bum. Yeah, if you have a, yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, but, that's I mean, just like, where the are people going? are buying it. You'd be surprised. Mimu's having, I mean, their accessories are nice. The, the ready-to-wear is good. And I've actually been seeing a lot of men in, in uh, Mimu. I mean, they're buying the cardigans, the jackets. Because I, I follow those Instagram pay pages. It's like uh, football players walking into the mm -hmm. stadiums and stuff, and they're in Mimi jackets. Interesting. Well, I wish Mimi. Well, no, I don't wish because if it if I they don't. Were, if they were having a moment back then, then I probably I would have stayed. Yeah. But you know because. I felt like, especially Mimi, Mimi and Atlanta didn't mix. Like uh, the Atlanta shop, nobody was, got it. They didn't get it at all. They were very much into LV, 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 Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. They just wanted the brands that they that everyone would know that they're wearing. And that's, I mean, I think we're still still there. We are still there. We are still there. Um, so I feel like Mimi is one of those brands. It's for the girls who get it, mm -hmm. you know, and not necessarily for the trend followers because. I think it's having its moment. It's it's so strong in Europe that it's trickling down here, and the girls are kind of jumping on it because the European girls are doing it. Because Mew Mew has never really done well in this part of the like in this no. it, right right like well they only have like three four stores yeah. New York but it did, Miami it, it does good it does well in Canada I can see that yeah it does well well Canadians have style. We do. <laughs> Canadians have style. I mean, I've never met. Funny a... enough, all my Canadian friends are like, oh, we're all so boring. I was like, no, y'all haven't no. left yet. No, no, we have style because we, we shop, right? Like, we buy things that make sense and we're. We, we, we try things a little bit more. I think we're very much, we're very open. We also have a huge Asian population and we know our Asian sisters, Ugh. they can dress. So, you know, like, My Asian you're always inspired brothers and by sisters that. Yes. can put anything on. I love it, I love and it. That's why, the that's why most of my besties in Toronto They are walk Asian. in and I'm looking like, what? I would have never, never th thought exactly. about that. Yes. There's I would have never thought about there's that. There's a girl that I follow, Holly, and she's in her 50s, but you would never tell. She looks like a baby, and the way she puts, even things that I hate, that I would never buy, when Holly puts them on and puts them together, I'm like, yo, she she did that. You know, and I, lo I just love when people take chances, no matter, and she wears head to toe ready to wear. Yeah. You know, I don't like counting people's coins, but I always like, I can't help it. Every now and then I'm like, ooh, she, she, she spent money I on don't that like look. the count, but I do. You, but we can't help it because- We can't help it. Because you know, I know how much things cost. Exactly, I know so how much things I'm cost. So I'm looking though. and I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like legit, oh, wow. I look at certain people and, and, and not to say that I don't look at people who don't have head to toe designer, I look at style. But I'm like, if you have great style and everything is like, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm usually impressed because a lot of people buy head to toe luxury as a cop out because in their heads, I'm stylish because I'm wearing all luxury. Absolutely. You know, so it's an easy cop out. So my thing is when you, when you're not wearing head to toe luxury and you're still like, that's when, for me, that's when I'm like, oh, she's got style. She's got style. She's got style. But, but if you are taking the things that are just so avant-garde or, you know, fashion style driven, and you're really making them more interesting than the mannequin, then I'm like, okay, then she's really got style too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love to see that. Okay, let's get to the next question, because I'm like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm sure the girls are like, dude, y'all are just talking, talking, talking. But it's fun though. Uh, let's see, okay, uh, you know that last question, I don't know why I put, and those trying it. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my own question. I was like, what I mean, there mean? are a lot of people that are trying it, yes. especially on social media. Like, yes. I just, I what hate. What brand do you think is really trying it right now? LV. Ooh. I don't feel like LV has DNA the way other brands have. Mm. There are house codes, and for those of you who don't know the, what a house code is, it's what, it's basically like the DNA of a brand. Mm. LV has some. But when I think of like other house codes, so if you think of like Fendi, you have fur, mm. you have monster, mm. you have pecan, which are the stripes, mm. you have the FF logo, mm -hmm. you have celery and leather. Ooh, I love my celery. <laughs> you have that. 
And you can keep it going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And then you have Prop Prada, you have nylon, mm -hmm. you have the triangle. Yes. You know, I don't like that triangle. I would really? do that. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. To me, I don't, maybe because I haven't seen it up close and personal, but online it looks cheap. It looks like they just put it together. I mean, I could see that. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, it looks like my daughter would be carrying it. They're like, oh, mommy, let's go. You know, that's what I see. You'd be surprised. I, I mean, but from what I've seen, maybe the people the love it. Maybe the embellished one. Maybe the embellished one. Anything yeah. embellished, I feel like more goes into it. But I saw a few, and I was just like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you try to like it. Yeah. But I was just like, nah. But a lot of these brands have major house codes. And when I think of LV, besides the Epi? LV, yes. you have the leather Epi. Yes, which I love. You have the Damier. Yes. What's next? That's true. <laughs> There's nothing else. And the sad part is if someone's wearing Louis Vuitton ready to wear, mm -hmm. if you take the logo or anything LV, would you know what it is? No, I actually have some Louis Vuitton ready-to-wear pieces coming my way um, without logos, but I also got them really inexpensive. But would somebody know? No, they would never and, know. And, and that know. is the issue that I have with oh, the brand. Oh, so I, I get it. I get it. I want pieces, like, even, you can look at a Bottega, take a piece and know, that's Bottega. Mm. You just know. Because there's that design element. You can that look at Versace, even though sometimes it could be tacky as hell. You know, my Fendace is one of my favorites. But I love it, guys. I love it, too. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> I love it. I love. That was a moment. I do yes. think that you bought a moment. You yes. bought a piece of it. Keep that for yes. forever. I love it. Yes. Um, the bags were beautiful. Yes, they were. I um, but you can look at certain Versace pieces and say, that's Versace, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even have to say it. Yeah. You know, you can look at a Valentino baby doll dress and just know. That's Valentino. You know, yeah. even if you want to go back in the day, you could look at a Betsy Johnson dress and say, that's You're, Betsy oh, Johnson. Absolutely. And it doesn't and even I say it. And I actually miss the Betsy Johnson because she, she was a still luxury, but on the lower end. So more, more on the mid range, but high mid range. She was a Kate Spade yes. price point. Price point. But it was fun, right? It made it exciting to absolutely. see in fashion. And I don't know if anyone's doing that. No one. Not, not anyone. And she was in her own lane for so many years. But that's the thing. Nobody wants to be in their own lane. Everybody is creating mm. the same type of bag, the mm. same type of this, the same type of that. They literally look at other brands and go, okay, well, they have that. Well, I'm going to do that. They have this style bag. I'm going to do this style bag. No one's putting anything new on the market. 100% on that actually 100% on that mm, okay so let's go to question number five what fashion trends and accessories are 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 a big no as far as you're concerned a big no <laughs> okay something that's going to make me scream is when I see a woman with what is it uh those clear shoes what's it called oh, PVC, PVC. <laughs> Okay, it's over. You know you're going to offend some people. I know, me. I know. They're going to attack me. PVC's over. Stop. Um, um, but I, I will I give lie. you PVC I for the summer. And I mean two summers ago. <laughs> the people are still doing it. The people are still buying it. The people are using this as like an evening shoe. The yeah. people are wearing this with anything and everything. Yeah. And it's like... I'm it's, gonna, uh, you know what? Funny enough, well, two years ago when it was actually a thing... I bought the Amunamuwadi PVCs, and I was just like, what the fuck? I returned it with a quickness. I was just like, first of all, they were so uncomfortable. They're sweaty. Exactly, and it was like a wishy, oh, it was just, it was horrible. It's weird, but people really, it's a thing. Yeah, and yeah. I always say it's the girls that don't know which shoe to wear. <laughs> I know, I said it's it. It's the cop-out shoe. <laughs> it's the girls that don't know. They get dressed, they don't know, so they go to that shoe. They literally do not know, so they wear that shoe. And why are you wearing that? I mean, it stresses me out, and I actually see it a lot here in Atlanta. Like, oh, I'm pulling a, my hair. But Atlanta is a different species when it comes to fashion. PVC is a big, big no. I'm mm -hmm. sick of seeing it. I, like I said, it's a shoe that when people do not know what they're wearing, they don't, I'm sorry, when people are wearing some, 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 the, something and they don't know the shoe that they want to wear, they wear PVC. the PVC and it's too it's much a cop of out. it. It is a cop out. It's, it's a cop so out. much and I hate it. Um, another thing that I hate and it's really big here, I hate the legging and the matching top combo. Oh, you, you, I don't, oh. so when Why I used to work leggings? for Miu Miu, which was, this was probably about eight years ago, the, the head of Prada at the time, 
came to Atlanta. He came to the store. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, we, we hit it off immediately. So I was, I went to Lennox with him and we were walking around. He's like, so what do people wear here? I was like, <laughs> I said, there's a uniform in Atlanta. It's a uniform. It's the leggings, the fitting tank top to match, and a Chanel jumbo. Yep. And that's it. And, you, and you're considered a style and, expert. <laughs> and, and, and you're dressed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to ever see you in a legging. I don't care who you are, I don't want to see a legging. And the thing is, the rap girls are wearing it. Yeah. And that's fine because that's for them. Yes. I yes. think there's they a certain... They can have it. They can wear anything. That's, a, that's just a niche for them and it mm -hmm. works well for them. Mm -hmm. But the girls come here and think that they can put a legging on. You know, I, I'm very social. I go to dinner almost every night. I'm, I'm mingling with the people. I'm out. And I see the girls. He's in the, the one legging. who advises me what to do, what not to do. Don't go there. Don't go oh, there. I can tell you, they reached out. They reached out to me, asked me to join the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I know. <laughs> it was a no for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no been, drama. Yeah. yeah, I have no drama. You, you, you don't need that. Yeah, but you always used to tell me, like, when when I would get invites, you're like, no, don't go to that. It's not worth your time. It's, it's not, not worth your, your crowd. Time. Yeah. It's not your crowd. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, the crowd of the leggings with the matching tank or the matching shirt with the big jumbo bag, it's, it's got to stop. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Three black hearts if you agree. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. So next question. Um, question number six. Uh, what fashion trends, accessories do you want all your clients to try this year? I think... Hmm. I think women should actually e explore menswear a little bit more than that. I'm 100% down for that. Because they're actually putting more focus into men's yes. than they are in women's, and that's why I'm saying that. The LV, LV, one of the LV pieces that I have coming is a men's sweater. Nice. And then yesterday I wore a Michael Kors sweater. Mm. So I did a campaign with Michael Kors, and I selected from the men's department. Yeah. And it fits so good. I find myself styling clients in men's more than women's. Mm. Um, I find myself picking things mm -hmm. like people were like oh I need something to wear and sometimes I don't even think of women's I automatically just go straight to men's mm -hmm. because you can style it in a way where it could be feminine and a lot of these men's pieces have a feminine touch I, agree. I think women really need to shop men's more mm -hmm. um, and let me um, introduce this real quick the quality is better Ugh. it's actually better Men's fabrics are thicker. better than, yeah, they're thicker, which means they last longer. So technically, it's a better investment buying men's clothing. Yeah. Sometimes you will see the price point is a little bit more, yeah. just a, a little, little bit, bit yeah. but it's worth it. Yeah. Um, that. Also, I think people need to start having fun. We need to start getting dressed. You know, I, I understand the pandemic hit. Everyone became su super lazy. No one's going into work. No one's doing that. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But get over it. <laughs> I think that there needs to be some type of like uniform now. Like no one's getting dressed. I'm sick of seeing Lululemon. I'm sick of seeing Honey, sweatpants. Honey, I've been sick of seeing Lululemon. I remember this is back in the day in my 20s. I'm 44 now. In my 20s when I used to work at Halt Renfrew in Canada. So Halt, if, if you are not familiar with Halt Renfrew, it's basically like the Sac Seaman Marcus of Canada. And I remember a black client, and not very many at the time, not very very many black women were shopping yeah. in the luxury with me. And she was like, all these mothers are coming, dropping off their kids, wearing Lululemon. She's like, I can't stand that shit. I and I remember this vividly. She's like, honey, I'm going there with Michael Kors. I was like, that's why when you see those people talking about black girl luxury, I'm like, we've been doing this, for, doing so this for so long. Like, I would admire this woman because she was the only client that I had that was buying, wearing head to toe luxury that was black because there weren't... Um, a lot, at the time, yeah. there weren't a lot in Canada, at least that were shopping with me. So when she would come in dressed, and I'm not talking Michael, by, I don't even know if Michael Kors had his um, secondary line at the time. She was wearing Michael, Michael Kors, Kors collection. collection. And that shit is expensive. Very. And that's for the girls yeah, who, who get it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. I, I just want people to really dress up. Like there's no excuse why you're always in sneakers. There's no excuse why you're Unless in sweatpants. Unless you're gonna style it like me. Unless if you style it well, but there's no excuse why someone's always in sweatpants. There's I no agree. excuse with a sweatshirt. Like it's not raining outside. It's <laughs> like we're, we're not running errands. Like put it Even on. Even if we're running errands, like but there's why a way are we, to still look. But still, why are we buying all this designer stuff? Why are we, are we buying all these nice clothes if we're not gonna wear them? Absolutely. Gone are the days where we're saving it for the friggin' special no. occasion. The fact that we woke up, we're breathing, we're healthy. Please wear your clothes. 
wear, wear your, clothes. your clothes. Tomorrow's not promised. Yes, you know, my son used to, my my because my husband's still kind of stuck in that I'm saving it. He's beginning to get mm. out of it. So my son was doing it. And then all of a sudden, my son had to come to Jesus. Mommy's like, Mommy, you know, I really just want to wear my clothes when I get them. I said, please. Absolutely. I said, there's no guarantee. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Wear them now. Enjoy them now. Well, the thing is, I mean, you paid for it. That part. <laughs> like, that part. wear your things. Use them. Yes. Like, and, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I was famous for buying things and sitting on it. Yeah, like, I would pull out a shirt that had been sitting there for, like, six months. And everyone COVID would be like, oh, my God. That. But now I'm wearing it. Yeah. I don't care if you invite me to dinner. I don't care if you invite me to your home. I'm putting something on. Yeah. I'm going to be dressed. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if I live a life of luxury, hmm. You're gonna see it. Yes, honey. And they should, the grocery store here, because I go every day to get to get my Pokeball, they look at me like, where the fuck is she going? Excuse I'm my out. language. I probably should be cussing that. <laughs> but no, like legit, because honey, I step in. Like my outfit of the days that I post, yeah. this is it's what I'm wearing. Yeah, this day. is what I'm wearing in real life. Absolutely. And I show up with what I'm wearing in real life. Yeah. And I'm just like, if I'm not wearing it here, where am I gonna wear it to? My I house? <laughs> Even I though I sit in my office, I'm still gonna wear it because you know what? I pay for it. I want to look good. I want to feel luxurious every day. And the funny thing is I have a great, this is a perfect example of a high-low outfit. My sweater is a cashmere sweater, but it's not on the expensive cashmere side. It was more, it was like Jay McLaughlin, the brand gifted it to me. They're probably like $250, $200. Yeah. Skirts from Karen Bridget's um, Amazon drop. I think it was, what, $30, $40. But then I paired it with my Jimmy Choo boots, which cost me, what, $2,000. And then my bag, which is another $5,000. So it's all about finding that balance and making things work for you. But like, even with my cheap pieces i still feel luxurious as hell it's also a mindset it is a mindset and i will say for though like if let's say you're just not feeling well mm. to, today's not your day you'd be surprised how much of a pickup of, of a pick-me-up is when you actually get dressed up yeah you put some makeup on you do your hair you wear a nice outfit you walk out the house you may not have had the best day the best morning but when you walk out the house you actually feel a little bit yeah. better yeah and that's that's why especially when i don't feel good i make a conscious effort to dress up absolutely and it legit it will always switch it switches that there's something about it that just switches it especially when you're wearing things that get great compliments it just it's a mood changer it's and i booster. hate to say this and you know the world is this way but people treat you better oh yeah when you oh. look nice oh, and when you dress better hundred Honey, why do you think everyone loves me? Wherever Let me tell you I go, something. Anywhere I go, I'm just like, Me and my hey. friends. So a couple of years ago, I was in Greece. Wait, were we? In, yes, we were in Greece, in Mykonos. Oh, nice. And we went to, the, like, one, one of these exclusive clubs. I mean, like, you can't get in. It, it doesn't matter who you are. We didn't know. We're, you know, we're new. We're in town. We get there. And the bouncer is telling all these people, no, mm -hmm. no. No. Sorry. You have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait. Me and my friends come. We're all dressed. I couldn't even tell you what I had on, but I, I was dressed. Well, okay? like, yeah, like, you got to tell I, me. I, you I, have honestly, you have to me. I can't even remember, but I, I mean, I honestly don't know. But like, I, I do know that I was dressed. My mm. friend was dressed and our other friend, she was dressed as well. They let us in. Of course they did. The this man looked at us and said, give me 10 minutes. Mm. He did what he had to do and he goes... And that entire line had to wait. And I looked at my friend and I said, it's because we were dressed. It's yeah. because we looked apart. It's because that they they wanted us to be a yeah. part of what they had, had yeah. going on. Yeah, and this is why I try to encourage people. You know, it's it's like saying the secret out loud, but that's reality. We live in a very shallow society. You know, people judge you on how you look. So my thing is, it doesn't have to be designer head to toe, but at least Oh, it doesn't have to yourself. be designer. Yes. It has to just you look nice. That part. Exactly. Look decent. Yeah. Like, and if not even for everybody else, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, like before you walk out the house, clean off your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is so many things that are the cheat codes. Mm. You know, tailor your pieces, mm. clean your shoes, iron your shirt. That, oh, the ironing part. <laughs> Steam it out. Do I something. I hate ironing and steaming, but I. But will, you have to I do have it. To do it. I. That's one of the things I hate with a passion, but I got to do. Like, it. there's no reason why we are walking out the house looking to shovel every day and then and then everyone's wondering why like oh i'm single no one's approaching me oh i'm this i'm that because you walked out the house looking like that <laughs> that's exactly why and we live in a society where everyone's paying attention yes everyone's paying attention yeah, because I, they want to they want to criticize you so they're looking with evil absolutely. eyes like what, well, let's see what she's doing wrong you know i've gotten clients from other clients based off of just me being in the room or me just looking better than the yeah. next <laughs> Like, I mean, it's happened. Yeah. So it's like, 
you know, I, I really want us to really start dressing up mm. or putting some effort into what yeah, we're at wearing. Least put that, at least put that effort. Put that yeah. effort. Okay. So I feel like, in a sense, that kind of um, um, bleeds into question number seven, which is what practical advice can you offer women looking to um, enhance their wardrobe without breaking the bank? Number one, confidence. Mm. It's free. It's Confidence is free. <laughs> I have so many clients who I, I can tell when I'm with them. I'm at dinner with them. I'm at their homes. I'm in their closets. We're just out and about. And they literally think twice about everything that they do. Mm. They don't stand their ground in anything. Mm. They don't get dressed. And there's not a confidence about and it's like you're spending all this money you're spending thousands of dollars to question yourself mm. i don't give a damn what you buy mm. put it on and own it that part oh oh oh, oh. that's my honey even I, if i don't agree with it oh yeah put it on and own it i can look like a crazy person once i've left my house as far as i'm concerned as far as everybody's concerned i am the shit nobody can tell me nothing absolutely nothing and i'm trying to tell my kids i'm trying to install that in my kids that even if you don't like your outfit, once you leave the house, because my son is in this freight, um, stage where he's trying to get his locks right, okay. so he questions it. I said, you can question it in the car with me, but once you get to own school, it. you own it because you ain't gonna I'm like I'm not gonna let you come back home and let those little <laughs> little bad baby kids uh, come and say, oh my son, no, yeah, no, own even, it. I told him, I said, you own it. You own. It. You're like, yes, my my hair. And the that's best. my Everything biggest thing with all of my clients is confidence mm. you have to believe it first not me you have to believe it you're the one spending the money you're the one that wants this you're the one that wants to look nice you're I the one you literally have to own everything that you're doing you have to own that walk you have to own what you put on own what you say out your mouth mm. own when you talk to someone look them in the face look mm. them in the eye mm. so once you've mastered all of that because that's free people have to get out of the idea that they have to wear a designer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to because there are... And this is coming from someone who works in luxury. We've been wearing luxury for years and I 100% su support that because it's such a misconception that well, if I'm not in designer, people won't take me seriously. Because people think they don't have the money. Yeah, yeah. And I get it. There was one point in time when I didn't have the money where I couldn't afford half the shit I'd have. Mm. But at the end of the day, what I wore when I walked in with that Zara and that ASOS, I owned it. Amen. And I want people to understand you don't have to wear luxury. You can wear these middle bridge brands. Mm -hmm. You can wear the Zara's, the ASOS, mm -hmm. the J. Cruz. Mm -hmm. Those are all affordable brands that everyone can afford, mm -hmm. the H&Ms of the world. Mm -hmm. um, you just have one, have an eye, mm -hmm. know what to yes. pick, know what not to pick. And I think that your styling has to be on point. You have to know exactly, also know your body type. Oh yeah. Oh, because that's another thing. Yes. A lot of people are not dressing for their body type. Yes. They don't know what works for them. Like They're for me, I have long legs. Trends. So I know pants look amazing on me. I know I have broad shoulders. Jackets look amazing on me. Mm. So I will always, nine times out of 10, have a strong jacket on. Mm. I will always have a nice pant on because I know what works for me. Know your body type. Mm. Um, and so you don't break the bank. Like I said, you don't have to always go designer, but if you want a piece of designer, but let's say you budgeted and you have a certain amount, you don't always have to go and buy the brand new bag. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to go out into these stores and buy. You can go on Fashion File, mm -hmm. the real real, and get a secondhand bag. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. I have multiple bags that I got secondhand from Fashion File. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem saying that mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, when I got the bag, it actually was brand, brand new. The website was selling it brand new. Somebody sold the bag brand new, and they marked it down $1,000. Mm -hmm. Why would I buy it in the store for $3,300 when I bought it for $23? That part. Uh, I got $1,000 less for a brand new bag, and I just bought it from a different website. Yeah. You tell me. So, I mean, there's ways to work this system. And I think that once we get out of our mind, first of all, get off of social media. Because social <laughs> media is telling you, you have to wear designer, you have to do this, yeah. you have to do that. And that's not the case. Mm. When you can decipher from the real and the fake and realize that But I was going to say, media, just, stay on, just follow me on social media. Because, <laughs> yes. you, know, you know, we keep it real. Ignore, all, <laughs> ignore everybody else, but you can follow me. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's when we realize that 
we can, you know, have our own opinion, have our own self-worth, and all that other stuff comes later. And there's ways, like I said, there's cheat codes to everything. Mm -hmm. So that would be my advice to anyone that's trying to live a fabulous life, but let's say on a budget or they don't want to break the bank. There's ways to do things. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there's another thing. There's also thrifting. A lot of people forget about that. There are so many designer thrift stores that you can go go to and get pieces where you're not spending anything. Mm -hmm. There's a girl that I know that I follow on social media. Her name's Olivia. She's been thrifting for years. Mm. She goes to the, at the these normal th- thrift stores around here in Atlanta. She actually goes to the ones that are in... The fancy, ritzy areas? Fancy, ritzy yeah. a- areas. And she'll get Louboutins. Wow. $20. All the time. She's getting YSL shade. She's getting all kinds of stuff. What? Don't get me wrong. She's in there for a while searching. I don't, I'm she's not patient go- enough. I'm not either. Yeah. But she's going through the rack. She's looking at the names. And next thing I know, she's like, hey, guys, I got a full outfit head to toe and I'm talking about she's getting like I mean major brands mm. I mean major brands and you know she's probably getting the better quality because these are probably older pieces. absolutely mm. she's getting major brands and I want to say she might have spent a hundred bucks damn I've seen it she posts it all the time and then the thing is she will resell it on her page for <laughs> way more Smart so cookie. now you're going yeah. on so now you're going on her website or her page and you're spending three four hundred dollars maybe even more than that and she got it for 20 bucks Smart there are her. cheat codes to everything. Mm. Learn when these brands go on sale. You know, Learn- I'm about to I'm about to release um, the sale calendar, like just the best times. And to, people to, need to that. People need that. Yeah, people so I'm gonna need do a reel that. On that. The best because I was talking to um, I think I was talking to my strategy manager and I was just you know I was saying how you know for the longest time everybody has said okay I'm not going to shop in January I'm not going to shop in January but January is actually the best January time to is shop. the perfect time to it shop it is the best time to shop I told you I just bought some Rick Owens boots yeah the oh, boots were fire the, the boots were what twenty three hundred I got them for fifteen because I waited in January. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's legit. That's so. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that whole calendar because, with addition to January, there's other months. There's other time periods. You know, the sale, the fake sales. I'm gonna talk about all of that. Yeah. So it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. Okay, I love that. All right, the last question. In your opinion, how does dressing like a boss impact a woman's confidence and overall success in both her profession, personal and professional life? Well, we kind of spoke about yeah, that, but but when, like I said, when you dress well, you do better. When yes. you I can't tell you how many times, like, it's always like you get your hair done, Mm -hmm. it changes your attitude. Honey, I did my hair yesterday, we did a keratin treatment, and... You walked out feeling like you own the world. You have no idea. And I went for a meeting... And it looks nice and healthy, too. Thank you, I know, and you know, I always used to think my hair was too thin, I could never do this. And she's like, no, honey, I got you. But I had a meeting after that, met with um, the owner of, like, huge, like, um, what's it called? Um, One of these party... Yeah, it, like spots. I'll tell you about it afterwards. Okay. Like two really big spots that you know about, and then another one. She's in charge of the private hangar at the airport. So just yeah. So I was just like, but of course, and I had no makeup on. But honey, I still felt like. But yes, you felt like a million bucks. I sure did with my a Michael haircut. Cor- yeah. Your hair done. Your nails done. You'd yes. be surprised what the small things will do. But, like I said, you want to do well in life. Look good. That's literally start. The number one thing, and this is what I tell everyone, the number one thing in life is to show up. That part. Show up in your relationships. Mm. Show up in your friendships. Show up at work. Mm. Show up at the gym. Mm. (laughs) Show up. All what you have to do is show up. Mm. Show up ready. Show up prepared. Show up whatever that looks like. Show up. Mm. When you show up, you will do better. Amen to because that. Because there's a lot of times that we don't show up. We're not ourselves. We're not mm-hmm. doing this. And then we wonder why things flop. We, we wonder why mm-hmm. things don't, don't work out. Like, it's a whole psychology to it all, but show up. Mm-hmm. And for women, you want to do well in the workspace, you want to do well, start by this. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to get su- superficial or anything. No, no, no. Just show up. Yeah. Take some time to work on this. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in the room, people will take you serious. Mm -hmm. Look up. Talk to people in the face. Look them in the eye and talk. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be nervous. Even if you are nervous, you better hide it. Don't be disheveled. Just make sure that you were there. My sister gave me this advice because I was going, I think I was going on a brand trip or something, and the CEO of the company was going to be there, and I was, you know, getting all 
a little nervous um, and because Bo was like, you know, do some research on the person and get to, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I was getting a little ner nervous. But at, and at the time, my sister was in Spain for Fortune 500, like CEO conference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's right yeah. up there with everybody else. So like these are the CEOs of Google, all that. And obviously she's up there with Canada, um, Canadian Tire. And she's like, my friend, half the time that I was there, this is where the Nigerian yeah. accent comes out. And I don't know what if it's the cockiness of being a Nigerian, because you know we're cocky, we can't help it. But I love it, though. Yeah, she's like, half those people, all she's like, after when they started talking, and men, so when they started talking, she's like, all she could think of is, how the, f how the F are you here? Like, mm -hmm. why are you here in this Because job? people talk a good game. That's the thing. And maybe, like I said, if you want to really go back to the beginning mm. of my career, Career, I think maybe I did get the job because you talked I, a good game. I talked a good game. That part. And that the part. thing is, like, people always wonder, like, you have excelled in this. You've done this. You've done this. You've done this. I talk a good game. I know what to say. I know how to get by. And yeah, you know, there are other people that are way more talented than me. Mm. There are other people that are more skilled, skilled than me, but they lack mm. the technique. Mm. They lack the confidence. Mm. They lack a lot of that, and that's what holds them back mm. in life. And I think when people really, like, you just have to have confidence in everything. That's just the number one thing in life. Just have confidence, you know? I agree. And everything else will just fall into it place. It really will. It will. It really will. Yes. Oh, that's what's so good. It will. I already knew. You know, <laughs> guys, if I, I'm going to try and convince them that we can have our podcast. Because we, we, <sighs> we can talk about fashion legit for hours. All, hours all day for hours and you know what my sister suggested she always has a great great idea she did this she did this interview when she was here but she did it kicking and screaming because i'm she's always busy she's like i'm on vacation i don't want to blah, blah, this okay, is work. all the time i could talk yeah. about this all day yes so but she was like you should just pick like what whatever trending topic is going on and just dissect it give it your per, your point of view all day let me know if you guys want to see that <laughs> let me know because i told brianna already like i know we first of all we've known each other for so yes, long first yeah. of all i want to give a shout out to you <laughs> i have i remember when i first met you you might have had three thousand followers yeah 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 and this is like back in the day before the algorithm is what it is yeah. now where you literally had to like the algorithm was in order Yes. <laughs> and you had to like back in the day you had to post yeah. multiple times yeah. a day. Yeah. Three, and let three, me tell you something about this girl. This woman would wake up, she would do the things with the kids, drop the kids off at school, go out in the streets of Atlanta and literally shoot 18 to 20 yeah. minutes a day. <laughs> oh, do you remember those days? I do. And Hannah used to R shoot me. And Hannah used to oh! shoot you. Rain, sleet, oh, snow, you name matter. it. You were out yeah. there yeah. doing all of these shoots. Just to post three times a day. And, you know, back in the day, in my, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, this girl, like, that's crazy. Like, this is excessive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But look at you now. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And it's funny because I'm somewhat new to YouTube. People will come on YouTube and they'll be like, how did you? How can you afford everything you have? I you, work I don't for see, it. I, that part. You don't have a lot of followers. You don't really, but I'm like, you, you don't, this is one platform. You it's don't know platform. how much work I have. I have seen it. And I can say I saw it. From day one, you literally have kicked ass Thank and worked you. so hard. And I am so proud proud of you. you. Um, I mean, it's amazing. Thank you. I'm Thank so you. proud proud of you. Thank you. And I'm proud of you too, honey. I'm proud of you. You've been killing it and you continue to kill it. So more success to come. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Maybe I can convince <laughs> you to do a podcast with me, y'all. Because I feel like if you are like us and you love to talk about fashion or if you love to listen to people talking about fashion and things that actually make sense and just kind of, you know, just the honest truth truth because the fashion industry is not as glamorous as everybody it's makes not. it out to be. That's and, another conversation. And that is another conversation Ooh, for that's another a day. Good conversation. Because the people don't know the work that goes in behind the scenes. Yeah. You have visual artists. Mm. You have people that are on the back end of not just styling, not just selling, but you have people that are on the garment construction. Mm -hmm. You have people that are on color theory. Yeah. You have people that are picking, okay, this fabric holds this color well, but it doesn't hold this. Mm -hmm. And there are meetings yeah. for buttons. Yeah. There are meetings for zippers. Yeah. There are meetings for, I mean, you name it under the sun. Everything that you can think of that comes to an item or a product, there are people that work in that field. Mm -hmm. And I think that we overlook that and we, we wonder why things cost so much. Yes, we do. And that and that's, everybody's got to get paid. That part, that part. Especially when the, when it's so artistry driven so there are certain brands that i always 
I'll look at it and I'll be like, yeah, I get it. So the Cuccinelli's of the world, because I remember back in the day doing product knowledge with the Cuccinelli rip, and they were so good about that. You know, like, the amount of what they put into it, I understand. I get it. I, I understand. Am I buying it, though? No, exactly. I'm not buying it. I can't afford Derek it. Derek is trying to get me to come into Cuccinelli. I was like, Derek, I said, hey, I said, I have a budget. <laughs> I'm like... That is for the ultra wealthy. Yes, it's for the ultra wealthy. And I'm not I'm not trying to fool myself. Like, I know... I know what I'm I know my of. lane. Exactly. I know, what I'm I know what I'm capable of. And I don't want to break my budget on one article of clothing. Yeah. That's just not, that's not, that's not for me right now. And even if it was, even if I had the money, the extra money to spend like that, I don't know if I would just because I understand that you can still have things. You know who their biggest cl client is? Who? Oprah. Oh yeah, I know. She loves Cuccinelli. She eats it up. Yeah, she loves, she loves Cuccinelli. She loves that stuff and they love her right back. Absolutely. They love her right back because I, I know, like, I think they, they were talking about it here that, she, you know, she's a huge Cuccinelli fan, but you could tell, like, at least for us that we have, we yeah. know Cuccinelli is supposed to be the brand that nobody knows what it is, but they have signatures. Every luxury brand has a signature detail, whether if it's the workmanship, if it's the beadwork, if it's the placement of something, there's always something. It's like art. So it's like signing your, your signature signature on art Absolutely. and that's what luxury fashion should be at that price point when you're spending or charging that much it shouldn't just be a loud logo it should be the artistry of it you know so when Chanel comes out with some of these flip floppy foolish things I'm just like whatever happened it's because Lagerfeld is dead that's why Lagerfeld died yes and the McQueen thing. died yeah you're right oh yeah the greats have retired yeah. Valentino is gone but Valentino they're doing well right now. They're doing. I, I don't mean, know the, how I feel about the accessories per se, but the ready to wear. The ooh, ready to wear. Ooh, that would have mm. to be another conversation. No. Oh, okay. Let me tell oh, you something. Yes. Okay. So we have. I think we have to do another episode of this. Or my four hundred one k. On that Valentino. Oh, it's good. It's good. Like every that now and then. That whole entire pink anything. Honey, every now and then I really tempt myself. I'm just like ah. If only I could have an event that could justify me That's buying. That's what I'm saying. Somebody have something. Yes, but to have, you have to have something substantial because I'm like, if me, I'm going to your event and wearing a three thousand dollar shirt. Ah, please, I actually have to be the owner of the party. I have to be my party. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be the owner of the party. I mean, I'm telling you, but the greats have either retired or they've gone, and yeah. that's why we're getting bullshit these yeah, days. Yeah, that part. That part. So, guys, don't feel, you know, if you want, if something, I, I like to say, if something moves your soul, if it speaks to you, buy it. But please don't fall, don't fall for the hype of the trends or what all the don't. girlies are wearing because half the girlies get it for free. We get it for free. So, unless it speaks to you, save your coins. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. And with that said, we're going to end the first episode of season two, Dress Like a Boss, well, Style for Success, Dress Like a Boss. Um, thank you so much, Rian. Thank you. Thank you for ha having me. It was oh, amazing. This is so fun. No, the, but we have to do more. Even if it's... I know. Yeah, I know. we, we'll, we got to do more. We'll, we're we're going to talk. Yeah, we're going to talk. I'm going to talk to my agency. I'm like, we got to make something happen. Like, something. There's so much potential here. Because I'm like, I know you guys enjoy this conversation because you are my fashion girlies. You enjoy listening to fashion. I say my fashion girlies, my fashion girlies and my fashion boys because I know I have everybody. Oh, everyone's yeah, watching. Everybody's watching. Everyone's so, watching. Yeah, so we're going to talk more about fashion, the ins and outs, all all that good stuff so stay tuned but thank you so much for watching this episode of dress like a boss brian if the girlies and the guys want to follow you on social media how do they find you what is your handle i am on instagram above and brian yes. that is actually the only thing that i have i'm you, you know i'm a little I reserved know, I, I don't ha reserved. i don't I have all of the street. things i know you've been trying to get me yes. to do the content creation yes. for years because i know you're photogenic number one and you got great stuff i have it i know yeah. i just need to wake up and grow up yeah. <laughs> I know. But growing up, adulting is not easy. It's I, like, not. I know, it's I not know. Easy. But it's okay. We have to experience it because it's either the opposite. It's either you're in the ground or you're adult and I you're know. growing up. So, and there's but, not too many men that's doing it still. No, you know, even um, one of my friends, she's she's a content creator, but she's also on the PR side, and she works for a huge agency, um, and they rep luxury all around the world, mm. so luxury resorts and all of that stuff. We were just talking about how you know um, one of my friends was encouraging my husband to um, do content creation as well because there are not there are not a lot of straight men, you know, doing There's style not. or and fashion, you know, and. He's like a manly man, so I feel like men will listen to him, you know? But the thing is, I think a lot of people struggle with, I don't have 
the time. That part. Oh, I don't, he, he tried it for a hot second. He's like, nah. I don't have the time yeah. or I don't even have the wardrobe or I don't have the budget or because they feel like every post has to be something new. Yeah. I, I have to be in something new. Definitely. I have to be in this. I have to be in that. And like I said, there's ways to mix and match. Yeah. There's ways to make it. You know, there are ways. I've been doing that a lot lately. And I'm just like, you know, because before I that was me. I was that person even in just out even. I think in life too, just growing up, I remember there, when I was my last year in university, I never repeated an outfit. Mm. But I always felt like it had to be new, it had to be whatever, and that's what happens to me every fashion week. But then I realized, I was like, but I actually like the things I buy. Yeah. So why am I gonna stop wearing them? And I'm like, that's a you problem. If you don't want to see me in what I wore before, that's on you, boo. I'm gonna wear but what I, I think pay for. What I love is that someone that wears something it makes it look new every time. That's and that's what I do, so, and that's what I'm very. So when good I'm at. on Instagram or wherever, and I see somebody, and I'm, and I'm like, I love the way she styled that, and then mm -hmm. I see it again, I go, I would have never thought about putting mm -hmm. that uh, together. Yeah, yeah. You know. And that's the be and that's to me, that is an indicator of true style. Absolutely. Being able to take what you have and make it work and make it look like a million bucks every time. So with that said, guys, follow <laughs> Brian. Say your handle again, honey. Above and Brian. Yes, and I'll have the text overlay up here. Also, of course, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It's Odd by Moni on both platforms. Check out my website, oddbymonica.com. Um, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel already, guys, what are you waiting for? Just go ahead and smash, well, first of all, smash the like button because you know this was a good video. And then hit the subscribe button and hit um, the notification so that way you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Bye guys.